Ramsgate, Kent, on a fine summer morning, has a deceptively calm appearance. The town's mix of predominantly white working class and recently arrived refugees has not always been well served by local schools, trying to meet the needs of young people like these from the Newington estate. These are the students who have failed to make the grade in Kent's selective system. Newington Hill Massive is, is Newington, straight up. <laughs> like, it's a big gang that think that they're well cool, but I don't know why they call themselves Newington Hill Massive. There ain't no hills in Newington. They call it the ghetto, you know, it's always like, people are staying stay in the council, council flats, so that's why it's always trouble like that, because no one has nothing to do. At the stunning new Marlow Academy, opened in Newington in 2006, head teacher Ian Johnson has championed an approach which aims to put an end to decades of underachievement by focusing on the social and emotional needs of the children. Way back in 2002, the decision was taken to replace the Ramsgate School, our predecessor school with an academy. Um, the Ramsgate School had struggled for many years uh, to attract students to get the grades up and I guess as a last throw of the dice, it was felt that the academy was the solution. When it was the Ramsgate School, people used to think that it was like, a really bad school, but I think that having this school here has actually like done something for them, and, and like, before it didn't have anything, the school was like, a wreck, and then they built this school, and it's, it's actually a good school, considering the fact that it's in Newington as well. I like it. When I looked at the plans for the building, I could see all sorts of potential disasters if we'd organised and run the school in a traditional sort of way. Our longer school day with our longer learning sessions with breaks in the middle, our staff having their lunch with the students and being there at break time to talk to them, were all designed to create and generate a school community that was almost self-regulatory so that the whole discipline, authoritarian approach that, that many secondary schools have taken um, traditionally uh, wouldn't be needed. Chat with me tomorrow. Hello. Right. <laughs> See you later, miss. See you, sweetheart. When Ian Johnson first became head, Lynn Hodges wondered whether she hadn't heard it all before. I went from one failing school with these kids to the next failing school with these children. Each time we were told there was a new head, which there was about 10 or 11, I can remember. Each time things were going to be different. You won't be the failing school. You will have this opportunity. You'll, it would turn your lives around. And time after time, we have told all this in the beginning, and it came to nothing. We were still a failing school. I didn't really think in the beginning that Ian was any different. After a few weeks, I realised that he did believe in the kids, that his whole ethos was the child is first, the child comes first. The children that come here get shouted at enough without us doing it as well. They feel low enough anyway having failed their 11 plus without us making them feel worse about themselves. And our job is actually to, to model and demonstrate a far more appropriate way of being with other people and to encourage and nurture their emotional health and not put them down. Can you show me where that is? As part of the school's child and community-centred approach, one of Lynn's jobs is to organise Butterflies, a 12-week transition course for Year 6 pupils from local primary schools. This week, the Butterfly students are visiting the English department. We are making a um, newsletter about, about, about Butterfly Club, yeah, which is um, quite like, fun to do. The point of it is like so we get to know like where all the classrooms are, we get to meet friends, so we know like people that are gonna come here. Well when we come here, um, as students here, we're gonna be um, like feeling butterflies in our stomach probably. At first I was a bit nervous because if I keep the way I am in primary here then I'm gonna not get along with very many people because at primary I sort of one of these that go around sort of giving it to people. Oh, I have a really bad yeah. attitude. <laughs> it's going to be like a new beginning for me so I can restart and be a better person, basically. A lot of these children come in with such difficult home lives that without dealing with that, seeing it as a whole package, a child, home and school, you know, 
they don't have the capaci capacity for learning because all these other emotions are filling up their head and it, that's on a daily basis. A lot of their parents have had a bad experience of education. So to put their minds at rest, we also run a programme for the parents. Every department gives them some input each week. And we found that's, that breaks down a lot of barriers. Um, it gives me great pride and pleasure to introduce the A-level group we've been working with this year on their practical unit of John Godper's bouncers. These aren't the type of people we turn our pupils into, they're just acting. Woo! Well, it's Friday, Friday night. night, and you've got your pay. So you feel all right. right. Into the pub. What are you doing? Donate, Donate points. points. You don't care. It's Friday, Friday night. night. Instead of hip, hippy, gip, gippy, hip, gip, hop, hop, drink that slot. And, and don't, don't you stop. stop. Get down, get up, get in, get out. 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 I actually went to the old named Marlow Academy, it was the Ramsgate School, and I felt like the teachers weren't approachable, I didn't have a good experience at school. When you come into here, you get like this nice feel of they're willing to help the kids and you can approach any of the teachers, they don't just like push you away. My oldest son's in year eight and he's achieved a lot more since he's come up here. I think um, it's each child, you know, an individual, um, they will learn at their own pace and through their own abilities. Um, but I feel my daughter's doing very well and has a nice new network of friends. This is an incredible school, really, and I'm pleased I chose the school. Ian Johnson's secret weapon is emotional literacy. To root teaching and learning at Marlow Academy in a fundamental principle that if you feel good, you learn well. Emotional literacy for me is all about relationships. You need to understand your own emotions, be able to manage them and yourself in order to relate to other people. I hope I demonstrate an emotionally literate approach. I don't have an office with a door and windows. My office is open plan and students and staff can see me and students and staff can come and speak to me at any time that they want. Um, I'm visible, I'm out and about, I'm approachable, I'm supportive. Our big approach to learning is to get the young people and the adults talking to each other, to get them to be able to relate, relate to each other outside the classroom. Michael Tullock is the school's emotional literacy coordinator. Now we get a lot of children who are really upset uh, because of break, that breakdowns in the family and again they're not talked about, they don't understand what's going on and, but we see a lot of their behaviour. I have check-in sessions where I, we get children to talk about how they're feeling at that moment and often the reflection that follows that is you know they'll then other children will then a acknowledge a person might be feeling a particular way b consider how that feeling may then impact on everything else they do my particular focus has been really getting the teachers on board i do work as well with students but that's within my sort of timetable that's right i run we're on at 11 o'clock. Right? And they're coming. And they're Wild coming. bunch, 11 o'clock. At the head's suggestion, Michael works with two year seven nurture groups. Today, it's the wild bunch. Anyway, no, no. anyway Dave, right. who's first? Is there the way it it could have been easy for me to just been sort of pigeonholed with children who are considered problematic and the teachers just dumped them on me because I've had that experience before. I'm the expert. Oh, let's give them to Mr. Tullock. I was going to ask Alex. How are things at the moment, Alex? Uh, Miss Miller, do you know, guess what I did to her? I hugged her. John? Yeah, me too. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, Miss, we hu I hugged Miss Miller twice. Why? Because to get on her good like her. side. To get on her good side? Miss Miller? Miss Miller, yeah. How did she respond to that? And she smiled. Did she? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm in a good fix now. I personally believe in relationships, the building of relationships. And certainly as a teacher, that's always been, I think, what I've fo focused on, because I'm of the opinion that if you get a relationship with an individual, the teaching and all the other stuff come that much easier. You know, I think the teachers who have the most success are the ones who've developed the best relationships outside of the learning. What do I mean by genre? What type it is, like action, romance, or something like that? Whoa, you're on fire. What do you have at break time? Nothing. Ah, stay off food then. Well done, James. Today I'm going to focus on assessing... For English teacher Norma Nandoro, originally from Zimbabwe, this approach was a real revelation. 
I come from a very regimental tradition, very authoritative, but so that when I came here, it was a shock to me, especially as I moved into the Marlow, but it's made me a fantastic person, not a teacher, but a fantastic person in my relationships with younger human beings. And today we are focusing on how do I open up my story? And I just want us to look at that. Jay, can you read that for me, please? Use a ver variety of ling linguistic... Well tried, linguistic. ...features like similes, metaphors and personification. Very well read. And you came across words that you are not quite familiar with, like linguistic, and you took that on very, very well. Social and emotional literacy, I found, is, is extremely important to get the students that we have in, in this school to actually engage in learning. Because when you find out basically how are you today and mean how are you today, they feel that you're not looking at them as just another student who's helping you get your salary at the end of the term. You care. If you went home tonight and mum said to you, Nakita, what you learn in English, what would you say? I don't know. <laughs> Give it a go. Um, who wants to help my kids out? Thank you, Jasmine. You should make it something like exciting or something. Very good. You should make your introduction more interesting, OK? I've been led to believe even the, the, the design of this building has been designed to promote emotional literacy. For example, the Harbour Cafe is a social meeting point. Again, like no other school, you know, at break times, traditionally, you kick children out of the building so staff can chill out and relax. In here, the children don't go out, they, they tend to stay inside. We choose to spend our time with the kids, but more importantly, the, ch the children choose to spend their time with the adults. So you've, you've taken away that barrier straight away. It's a mutual respect. The child is the most important, and there isn't a them and us, whether it be between different ranks in staff or adults and students. After every lesson, you used to have pips to tell you to go to the next lesson. We don't have that anymore, because they wanted you to sort of get used to life and work, because once you grow up and you go to work, you don't have pips and stuff. So I thought that was quite a good idea, because it's, again, they're not really treating you like children anymore, kind of all. That's just like a respect thing. Go forwards and back. Back again. Concentrating. Ladies, right hand. Our students are far more confident than they would be without the sort of approach that we're taking. Uh, they're far more aspirational. You know, they think they can do it, they know they can do it, but they're also far more able to ask us for help with their work with issues in and out of school. I'd never done anything like this before, before I actually got here. And I really, really struggled to begin with, but like, all the teachers have helped me and they've given me support and helping me with written work where I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going all right now. I like it a lot.